Shalom, Shalom. This is the brother Danya Allah coming back again with another lesson, giving all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahushai, Bahashem, Racha HaKwadash, the born to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone that taught us this word and that rule well. And shalom to the hopeful elect brothers and sisters. All right, that fear in Yahweh, while Yahweh Shai, the Heavenly Father, and His Son. And, um, you know, I was just watching uh, a live stream that, you know, that was uh, just on not too long ago. It ended like two minutes ago. Uh, with the brothers in Dallas, you know, uh, you know, the, the, the Apostle Racha, you know, Elder Ariella, Yashawamba, you know, and, you know, beloved brother, uh, um, you're one, you know, that, uh, you know, uh we used to uh, teach with up here in uh, Pittsburgh, but um, you know uh, the topic of a uh, of of a uh, different sacrifice that you have to make, and this truth came up um, at some point in the lesson, and I really just wanted to uh, this this is what inspired me to do this lesson, and I just wanted to uh, harp on that and um, you know go into some precepts because hey in this truth you. you there, there are, there's going to be sacrifices that is required of you, okay? You're going to have to sacrifice something in this world in order to serve the Lord. And that's really the condition of the battle, all right? You're going to have to sacrifice your time, <clears throat> your resources, the things that you hold dear to yourself. You're going to have to sacrifice them in order to serve the Lord. Right. Thus making the Lord your top priority. And that could be a whole range of things, man. Or right, anything that you can be attached to, you, you know, you would have to sacrifice it for the Lord. Right. And um, and you know what? Speaking of that, let me. Uh, let me let me go to uh, Hebrews chapter 11. Right, because making sacrifice is also what a testament of your faith. Um, let me see here if I can find it. Hebrews chapter 11, and this is all talking about faith. In verse 17, it says, by faith, highlight that, by faith, Abraham, when he was tried, meaning when he was tested, the Most High put our forefather Abraham through a very serious test, offered up Isaac. Now, who, who was Isaac unto Abraham? His son. And even more than that, his beloved son, the son that he loved the most. Right, offered up Isaac, and he that, and he that had received the promises, offered up his only begotten son. Right, his beloved son, he offered him up. The Most High said to sacrifice him unto him, and that was a test. The Most High wanted to see was our forefather Abraham was he was he down? Right, did he truly believe in me? And the Most High tested him, and the Most High. It's going to do the same to us, you know, literally sacrifice his beloved son, his, ch his child, right? So dealing with family, you know, and this is this is a literal sense, you know, they, they gathered up the wood and, you know, for the burn the offering and these, you know, that was in a literal sense, but even more in a spiritual sense, hey, we, we have to do the same thing. All right. Spend less time with our family so that we can do the work of the most high. Right. Hey, brothers, you know, that come into the truth or that been into the tr in the truth for a minute. You know, you might have had to split from your family or the Lord may have caused, uh, you know, you to not uh, have access to your children, man. You know, or, or, your, or, or you know, your, your parents or, 
you know, family members just don't don't deal with you, man, anymore. Coming into the truth. And that's a sacrifice. Right. It says of whom it was said that in Isaac, thy seed shall be called. Right. So, you know, though he was actually about to uh, kill and, and sacrifice his beloved son unto the most high. All right, the angel came and stopped him because it was a test. The most I wanted to see was he really going to do what he said, uh, uh, what, what I told him to do. Right? Was he really going to believe in me? Right. So that that precept came to mind. Um, but let's go back to uh, Romans. Right. The book of Romans, chapter 12 and verse one. It says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of the Most High, that you present your bodies as living sacrifice. Right. So in your your body, literally, when we go out onto uh, the camp. All right. The camps we post camp and we, uh, you know, we're, we're teaching out on the highways and the byways. We are literally. A, a, a sacrifice, man. That is the spiritual altar where we're offering up sacrifices unto the Most High. All right. Well, we're praising the Most High and bringing out, uh, you know, uh, uh, the prophecies and, and you know, uh, condemning uh, uh, the people. All right, reproving the people. Okay. That's that's a, a spiritual altar, right? But uh, brothers, is we're, we're putting our uh, bodies through aches and pains, standing on the concrete for hours and hours. We're out in the cold, shivering, re reading the scriptures. We're out in the hot sun, sweating, right in the wind, in the elements, man. We're literally putting our li uh, our bodies on the line, right? And and really being out there, we could we could really die, okay? Being out on the streets. Teaching the word. That's the reality of the situation. So literally our, our bodies are a living sacrifice. Right? And also we sacrifice our time and our, our resources also. It says holy. Acceptable unto the most high. Which is your reasonable service. So this is our reasonable service. Okay? This is the least we can do. <laughs> Right. It says, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of the most high. Right. So not being conformed to this world, not being all up uh, um, in entangled in the affairs of this world. OK, that's another preset real quick. Let me see. Let me just type in affairs. Here we go. It says, "No man that war." This is Salakia. This is Second Timothy's chapter two. Verse four, you know, I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm a little excited. Um, no man that worth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life. So we're in the spiritual war, right? Yes, we're we, OK. Yes, we got to go to work. All right. Brothers may do things outside of work to make a little bit extra money. You know, brothers might have a business or do this or do that, you know. Whatever situation we go through in this life, man, we don't. Yeah, we're, we're, we live in this world. You know, we use it, but we but not abuse it. Right. But we don't get entangled in this stuff, man. We don't get entangled in the different things that go on here in this wicked kingdom, man. All right. Or in this current um, uh, age, man. We don't entangle ourselves in it because what? Our minds are focused on what? The, the things that are to come, the kingdom to come.
the new age, the age of the Israelites, the age where Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai has order established upon the earth. So we don't entangle ourselves in the affair of this world. It says, uh, No man that worth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who have chosen him to be a soldier. Right? Part of being a soldier is being... A soldier goes back to uh, a solitary. Right? Also, uh, the, the uh, um, solitary... And also, uh, I believe it goes back to the word uh, uh, solid also, right? A solid, like a rock. You know, but a soldier is, is solitary, man. He's on his mission by himself. Right? It says, and if any man also strive for the masteries, yet is he not crowned except he strive lawfully? Right? So, striving for the masteries of, you know, the truth, man, the scriptures. You know, and that's that in this truth. That's what we're striving for. The men are for the masteries, man. Right. Right. So we don't entangle ourselves in the affairs of this world. Now, back in, you know, into sacrificing. Hey, man, you know, the different things that we sacrifice here in this kingdom all right, there's going to be great reward for it too, man, because we sacrifice it for the Lord. And the Lord's going to give us what? A hundred times more of all the things that we sacrifice. You know? Um, let me grab this. This is P, uh, this is Matthew chapter 19, verse 27. Then answered Peter and said unto him, Behold, we have forsaken all and followed thee. What shall we have therefore? So Peter saying, Look, Lord, we gave up everything to follow you. What's going to be our reward for doing this? And Yahweh shall have said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that ye which have followed me in the regeneration when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory. You know, regeneration, reincarnation, it really kind of means the same thing, right? And, and the Lord is going to give us a new body. All right. So our spirits are going to be in a, a new body in the kingdom, man, an extraterrestrial body, a superhuman body. Right, so it says in the regeneration when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of His glory. So when the Lord, our, our, our Lord Yahweh Shai, is glorified as the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, all right, upon the earth, when He sits in the throne of His glory, ye also shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Right, so for His disciples, you know, the twelve disciples, you know, except for Iscariot. But they're going to be on thrones too, man. Twelve thrones. Judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Right? And of course, you know, you're going to have, uh, you know, uh, lower ranked uh, rulers, a part of that governing body that are going to be under them. Right? The 144,000. Right? That are also going to have authority over different parts of creation. Right? Um, it says, uh, ye, ye also shall sit upon 12 thrones, judging the 12 tribes of Israel and everyone that have forsaken houses or brethren or sisters, your family or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my name's sake shall receive an hundredfold and shall inherit everlasting life. So if you forsake a house, one house, let's say one house. You're going to receive a hundred houses, man. Palaces. All right. Brother and sisters, father, mother, man. Hey, you can receive um, those same, uh, you know, spirits that that was forsaked on this side back in the kingdom. They may come back as your children. Right. Or wife. You have 
uh, uh, you know, uh, as many women, uh, wives as you want in the kingdom or children, thousands and thousands of children or lands. Right. Lord may put you in charge of an entire planet for my name's sake shall receive a hundredfold, a hundred times that and shall inherit everlasting life. And you're going to be immortal. Right. For the sacrifice. OK. So this sacrifice. To serve the Lord equals immortality equals riches equals rulership that's what we just read here but many that are first shall be last and the last shall be first you know and that's really the point man our, our sacrifice all right and, and continuing to do it and enduring unto the end that's going to lead to power riches uh, uh, uh fame you know, in, in, in the good sense, you know, uh, um, you know, power, riches, man, substance, you know, uh, inheritance, man, immortality. Right. So, hey, you know, just wanted to do a quick video on that, man. You know, sacrificing unto the Lord is, is, is a necessity in, in this truth, man. And the Lord is going to require us to sacrifice more and more as things get more straight, you know. But, hey, with that, Lord, will you edify? And I'm going to say, Shalom.